the story, and I mentioned this last hour, and, and we mentioned it last week. The United States um, has pretty much given up control of the Internet. Not quite sure why we did this. It's not extraordinarily clear to me the, the thought process that went into this. Um, but the, the, it, it seemed to be an issue that uh, the administration was in favor of. And it, you, you, you ask yourself, do, do you have our best interests in mind if that's what you're doing? And I'm, I'm not sure if that's the case or not. James Hurston is joining us right now. Uh, you read uh, his stuff and to see him in the Newsmax as well. James, how are you? Hey, great to be with you, Mark. It, it's great to be with you. I I'm still don't have my brain wrapped around why in the world the United States would want to give up support uh, or, or uh, the control, I should say, of the Internet. No, no, you have to really... Uh kind of stretch your mind to come up with an explanation. And, and first of all, what this story has kind of been buried. People haven't paid attention. Part of it is because there's this alphabet soup the government uses with all these multiple entities. But what's important for your listeners to know is that there is a essentially a function of the Internet that handles your, what's called your ISP address numerically, right. handles all the domain names on the web, uh, the .coms, .net, .org names, and basically handles the subdivision of the inter- Internet, uh, which is the core addressing system, and, and it's called ICANN, it, which, which stands for the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, which was set up uh, as the first step in this process of rel- relinquishing uh, United States control, we have to understand something. ICANN, this core addressing system, is literally the most powerful digital entity in the world. It, it has control and authority over these addresses, therefore has a powerful influence over the economy, over communications, over free expression throughout the world. And we have controlled this, and we, meaning the United States government, uh, we the people, have controlled this since its inception, and it was given away for nothing. There were people who tried to quantify the value of this control, that it could be in the trillions of dollars. We could have paid off part of our national debt by having people pay for it, but it was given away. The only possible explanation that I can come up with besides treachery and treason (laughs) is the explanation that the left has this um, notion that the United States is too strong and too big and too wealthy and and they seem to have this in, in some sort of twisted idea of fairness they want to reduce the strength of the United States that's why the military has been weakened That's why our foreign policy is in disarray. And I believe that's at least a rationale they're using for giving away an incredible, important resource. And also, it's the way they look at the world. It's the multicultural glasses they look at the world and say, say well, we're all the same. You see, we all have the same core values. And realists look at the world and realize um, that Freedom is an exception in the world. Right. Most of the world is controlled by people who uh, believe in feudalism and forms of slavery and totalitarianism and want to control the Internet. And therefore, if you give the Internet to an international stakeholder group, which is what ICANN has become, then what will happen is that the thugs will eventually take it over. Sure just they like will. they have the Human Rights Commission of the U.N., just like they have virtually every international organization. And we will lose what is right now um, the, the freest expression platform in the 
history of man. Well, if we can't, we're talking to James Herson, by the way. You can read his Left Coast report there at Newsmax.com. If, if, we, if we're worried about security and we constantly worry about hackers and uh, people releasing viruses onto the Internet, and I know that ICANN probably doesn't directly deal with a lot of that stuff, but I would think that the U.S. having final say over it is better, is more in our interest than it is not – and I'm not quite sure what what do we do going forward. I mean, as an American, I, I'm I'm hooked on the internet. What would I do without the internet every day? I have to ask myself. Well, yeah, and we're not going to notice it right away. And hopefully, I you know, and I know this gets political, but you know, the, it, it's the Obama administration that is responsible for this handover. If we continue the Obama administration, the handover will be cemented, and electing Hillary Clinton will do that. So that creates a political thing. Now, there were four attorneys general um, that filed a lawsuit. They tried to stop it. Ted Cruz um, in the Senate uh, led a, a, a legislative attempt that was killed by Mitch McConnell and killed by the Democrats as well. Um, and lots of ordinary citizens spoke out and tried at least said, slow down. What's the rush to give away something for free? But no, this administration just went forward and did it. And it is effectively done. I think a new president could possibly undo it. Fix it, maybe. Uh, maybe. You know, what comes to my mind, James, when I think about that is the Paris Accord Treaty that that the the president announced yesterday that they've now rushed through so they can get it in place before he leaves office uh, this is just one more example of him ceding part of the united states power to some international group well we have and that's we have i it's a form of legislation you know our country was founded because people were upset that legislation was being passed without representation taxation without representation was the primary reason that we gained our independence uh, from Great Britain. The international community has no accountability whatsoever. So the idea is that you can create legislation at the international level that affects our domestic life and enforce it by using the Constitution Supremacy Clause and say, look, it's a treaty, and therefore it's the supreme law of the land. This has been a dream of the left to use that for decades. And so this this Paris Accord under our Constitution means nothing unless it's approved by the Senate by a two-thirds vote. But we've already seen the treachery, and I have to call it that, that, that has been done in Washington, D.C., ceding authority unconstitutionally to the executive branch to enter into treaties that do affect us domestically, like, for example, the Trans-Pacific Partnership that's been talked about so much. Right. Because that, that has very little to do with trade. It has a, very, a great deal to do with an attempt to legislate a whole host of things that we don't even know um, other than WikiLeaks documents because most of it has been kept secret from the American people and from our representatives. It's a great point. James Hurston, listen, I appreciate your time today, and thanks for educating us on this issue. It's my pleasure, Mark. All right. Well, we will uh, talk to you again soon. I appreciate that. And you can uh, read the James report there, the Left Coast Report at Newsmax.com. He had a best time, a New York Times bestselling book, uh, Tales from the Left Coast. And, of course, you see him on Fox and Friends and the O'Reilly Factor and some of the other things all the time. Love to get him on here because it's a great, um, it's a great insight. Don't you wonder? I mean, d- don't you wonder what... What is what in this is in the best interest of the United States? Maybe that's the question I'm searching for. Nothing. I don't see anything in this that could possibly be in our best interest. That's what the president's supposed to be after. Same with the Paris Climate Accord. Greg, you're on the air. 